in the early days when they first came on the scene, they caused quite a stir. I mean, after all, they were revolutionary. Self-propelled machines with wheels. And before long, these strange-looking contraptions had made it from Europe to America and eventually all the way to California, where they became an instant hit. In fact, since the 1800s, bicycles have been a part of life in our state and are fine examples of California's gold. Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I to find out more about the California Bicycle Connection, I visited the Pasadena Museum of History, where they had an amazing collection of old bikes on display. Old bikes with rich and colorful stories to tell. Well, our bicycle adventure begins. We are standing here in the Pasadena Museum of History. We're in a room full of bicycles. I am standing with Mr. Bicycle here in Pasadena. <laughs> Dennis Crowley, you have curated this amazing exhibit of bicycles. And until we walk around and really look at them, I don't think most people realize how important bicycles have been in our history, they've always been here. Well, not always, but uh, they certainly made a big impact when they got here. Uh, I think probably the first thing we should try to do is draw a picture of what the world was like before the bicycle, where nothing changed and nobody went anywhere. Then the bicycle came along. And when did the bicycle come along? Uh, probably the first example of what we would sort of recognize as a bicycle would be in 1820. 1820, and funny you should say that because we have, is this an actual bicycle from 1820 uh, or a is, replica? This is a reproduction done for a movie in the 50s, Boy. but this is exactly how it would have been built back then. Now this is a wooden bike, and yes. when you first look at it, if you don't know what to look for, you don't realize there are no pedals to this bicycle. Right. How did they move on it? Well, one of the terms for this, it was often called a running machine, where basically what you did is you sat down on it and ran on the thing. Well, here's a picture of a fella actually running. His feet are touching the ground, and what, you would get the, the bike started, and then you would just put your, just your legs your up, up and coast along. And it would coast. Yeah. So this was. Is technically this still a bike, even though you were really just coasting well, on it? Well, it is two wheels in a line, and, and I think that's probably the first thing we can point to is that. All right, now that was 1820. Yes. That was what started it all, and then we move right over here to this bike. Well, this in the 1860s, now we've got, uh, instead of all wood, we've got mostly hammered iron. Mm -hmm. But again, the wheels are very similar to the others. You would go to your wagon smith, your wheel right, and have the wheels made. And plans for these things circulated through the various uh, blacksmith guilds. Because there's no rubber. These are just hard metal right. tires. Right. Uh, essentially, no essentially the same wheel you would want to put on your horse cart. But you do have... Pedals. 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 This is the main technological breakthrough that took place between the previous bike and this one. You're moving the bike. What's this all about? This is a flex bike. <laughs> well, one of the problems with the earlier bikes is the more you turned the front wheel, the more it rubbed against your leg. And so in order to get around that, they put the pivot in the very center of the bicycle with this linkage between the handlebar and the center of the bike. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back over here. This was one of these situations where when the... When the wheel would turn, you would see that soon this part of the wheel would rub on the inside of your leg. Oh, okay. And so that was a way to, to minimize that. So they were having, they were kind of coming up with all of these newfangled oh, yeah. yeah. ways of making the bicycle work. Well, that's, that's so much of what I enjoy about 
this period in bicycling is nobody really knew what one was supposed to look like yeah. and they were trying anything. All right, speaking of trying anything, <laughs> now I've always been amazed at these. I, these do not look like they would be easy to uh, ride. No, not easy, but they were a major technological breakthrough from any of the previous bikes in the, with the tension spoke wheel. All the previous wheels, the entire weight of the vehicle and rider was on the bottom spoke, you know, and that went back till uh, the Egyptian war chariots. But here, all the spokes distribute the load throughout the entire wheel, so everything got much lighter and much more resilient and much faster. But you were so high up. The reason if you for that, fell off of this thing, you could hurt yourself. Oh, guaranteed. <laughs> so falling was not, was not uh, required at all. <laughs> but uh, the reason they made the wheel so big is the, the larger you made the wheel, the faster you could go. So the guys with the longest legs got to go the fastest. How would you get up there? Uh, they have a mounting peg on the back. You put one oh, foot. Oh, okay. On Here's the peg. a peg right over here, but that's yeah. that's not something that most people can do is to is to mount up a bike that high up off the ground. It takes some practice and you certainly have to be committed by the time you start headed up for the saddle. Now, are these were these very popular? They were hugely popular. This is really when the first big bicycle boom started sweeping America and from there to the world. Now when was that? Uh, this is 1880s. 1880s? Yeah. So that's when the bicycle craze? Right. Would that's you call it, really it a craze? Oh yes, very much so. It In was, what way? Uh, it was probably one of the first big fads. Uh, it really did sweep the nation rather quickly. I'm looking at this this wonderful drawing over here of a bunch of guys and a woman going down the hill. They're out for an outing, and yeah, that's part yeah. of what that craze would have been all about. Yes, exactly. Uh, the bicycle led to the first road signs. People didn't need road signs because they didn't go anywhere. Again, uh, putting it back into perspective, most people never got further than a good stiff walk away from where they were born in well, their entire life. They could life. ride horses, well, they could I mean, ride carriages, they well, could take boat trips around the world. Right, but if, if you look at Hollywood, you think everybody used to have a horse, but actually they didn't. People pretty much walked everywhere. Very few people had a horse, very few people had the wherewithal to actually travel anywhere. So and this was, opened up short-term excursions out into the countryside. Out into the countryside, yes. But they couldn't, you couldn't ride this very well on a, on a dirt road full of potholes. Oh, that's you? what they were designed for. That's one of the advantages of having this very large wheel is it handled the rough roads very well. Dennis, you're really excited about this one, and I can't figure out why. I'm not sure, you know, what I'm supposed to be looking for. Well, uh, basically, this is the first huge breakthrough in bicycle technology in that they went from those high wheelers to a bicycle where both wheels were the same size. It got you closer to the ground, and it was so much safer, they, end they ended up calling this the safety bike. And wait a minute and the chain drive. The chain drive. That's what allowed it to happen. So before that, there was no chain on right. a bicycle? Yeah, the pedals were connected directly to the uh, crank axle. And this was called the safety bike. Yes. And when did this come out? This is 1885, and this is what really brought women into bicycling. Why? Well, women really didn't ride the high wheelers for yeah. a couple of reasons. One, I think they had too much sense. <laughs> the other was a woman could not show her ankles. And you couldn't straddle a bike like that without showing your, your ankles no matter how discreet you were. Wow. And the first women bicyclists were actually arrested for indecent exposure You're for kidding. showing their ankles. And what, what year was this? Uh, early 1880s. And this uh, truly, I yeah. mean, when you look at the way it was designed, there's a lot going on here. This is a real engineering piece of work right yes, here. This, this bike in particular has over a dozen patents on it. Uh, one of the things that was happening at this time, there were so many innovations coming so quickly that there were two patent offices in the United States, one for bicycle stuff and one for everything else. You're kidding. Staying on the theme of women riding bikes, now this, 
This is exclusively, was invented exclusively for women. Yeah, this was so a lady could ride a bicycle without showing her ankles. A lady's bike. Yes, <laughs> very much a lady. So what was the idea? This is the way you... Right, that's the steering. She, she would steer it with this little handle yeah. that turned. And she was able to wear a very long dress without <sighs> it getting in the way of her riding. And double wheels. Now that limited the effectiveness oh, of yeah, where she yeah. could go. And so this would just heavier. be uh, in town or something, a yeah. ladies town bike. Right, you couldn't go as far on these as you could go on a regular two-wheeler, but you could wear your dignified clothing. Now, though, they took off their dignified clothing <laughs> because this bike, which was, now when I grew up, this would have been a called a girl's bike because it didn't have the the, uh, what do you, right. the, what do you call this up here? The, uh, the crossbar. The crossbar. When was this made? And this was made just for women. Right. This is late 1880s. And that's when women started really enjoying themselves. Uh, the first women's movement was the rational dress movement, because you could either wear a corset or ride a bicycle, not both. And you also, here's a picture right here. Of the bloomers. She, she's wearing pants. Yes. Bloomers. Yes. So that must have been revolutionary for women to be out in public wearing bloomers like that, straddling a bicycle. Yeah, yeah, it, and they got out without their chaperones. Remember at the time, you, a woman could not go out without a male chaperone or an elderly aunt. So, so was bicycling more popular in, in a funny kind of way with women because it, it really liberated them? Yes, exactly, exactly. Women were out on the road in droves. Were there women's bicycle Clubs yes, or yes, and uh, and lots of picnics, lots of trips to uh, to the countryside. A strange looking bike. <laughs> what is this? These look like two different. I'd love to see this thing moving because I have no idea what this is all about. <laughs> well, this is a 1950 glide cycle. Uh, you pedaled on these arms, and what this lever does is it actually pulls these pedals up the shaft. So you have your maximum leverage down at the bottom it of the shaft. It goes back here. And your maximum speed at the top. Wow. Who thought all of this was 1950? Yeah, yeah. So even, even that late, there was still considerable innovation. All right, now from 1950 to where, whenever this would have been, but this looks back in the 1800s. Yeah. And they were heading out on a train car with their bicycles on the side to do what? Well, they're probably going out to the end of the trolley line and going for a ride in the countryside. They ride back. Yeah, exactly. And I'm looking over your shoulder at a map of California, which must be connected with bicycles because you got it hanging as part of this exhibit. <laughs> well, these were, these were actually conceived of and put together and paid for by the bicyclists of the time. Uh, the League of American Wheelmen were some of the first map makers. Uh, and here we've got one that was paid for by, uh, by bicycle advertising and hotel advertising where the bicycles would go. And it says map of California roads for cyclers. Yes. So this was a map showing cyclers where they could cycle in California. Yeah, yeah. In many ways this is one of the first maps that sort of shows where our future roads were going to go. All right, we're standing in front of this one. I have no idea what this is all about. A lot of wood in here and a lot of brass. This is an 1893 salesman's bike. Uh, all these brass sections are collet fasteners where you can undo them and these wooden sticks come out to allow you to pack it into a suitcase so you can take it on the train with you. So this is the kind of thing a traveling salesman would take with him on the train. To sell, he would get to a home or to a town, right. reassemble the bike to and show then, people what it looked like. Yeah, and get on the bike with his catalogs and go out into the countryside. So there were bicycle salesmen traveling across America, yes. across California. Yes, selling everything from brushes to more bicycles. In those early days, were bicycles considered toys for rich people? Yes, very much so in the early days. Uh, with, with these early bicycles when they first came out, often costing the equivalent of an average annual wage for a working man. Really? But it didn't take long for the production to get 
cranked up, and of course everybody who had one wanted the new one, and so used bikes also became available to the point where they were affordable by, by the general public. So these were really these amazing mechanical objects that, that caught everybody's imagination 20, 30, 40 years before the automobile came out. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and in many ways what we take for granted, uh, such as ease of independent movement, was first came to us with the bicycle. And as far as California was concerned, where was the real hotbed of bicycling, of cycling in California? Well, it was Pasadena. There were more bicycles per capita in Pasadena than anywhere else in the world. When was this? Uh, well, it started in 1885 at the beginning of the bicycle boom, and when the train arrived from Chicago, which was the largest manufacturing center for bicycles in the world, and so shipments of bicycles came to Pasadena immediately. To open up bicycle shops here? Yes, in 1900, there were 15 bicycle shops in Pasadena. 15 bicycle shops in Pasadena alone. Yes, not bad for a city that really had an, uh, a, a permanent population of 9,100. So this was a bicycle crazy town. Oh yeah, and there was a whole hotel building boom that took place at that point for the people who came here to do their uh, bicycle touring. Hold up, Dennis, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> well, it's one thing to talk about bikes inside the museum it's another to actually be out on the open road and here it is a glorious Sunday morning and we're going right down Colorado Boulevard here in downtown Pasadena Dennis could we be back in time right now is this the way it would have been in Pasadena Back in 1904? This is very similar to what it would be like in 1904. What would have been going on in Pasadena as far as bikes were concerned? Wait a minute, those motorbikes are passing us up. Now they wouldn't have had them back then. <laughs> they can't be having as much fun as we are. What would it have been like if we'd been out on the road in 1904 on a Sunday morning in Pasadena? Well, there certainly wouldn't have been any cars, and we would have had a lot of people out on bicycles because there was a huge hotel boom in Pasadena at that time, and the brochures of those hotels talked about, come out here to Pasadena, where we've got all these wonderful bicycle roads. So people would have come. Pasadena was a cyclist destination back then. It was a then. vacation destination that brought bicyclists from all over the country. And who would have been out? Would it have been families? Would it have been hardcore cyclists? Would it have been... Well, it was all of that. You would have uh, families coming out here for, for vacations. Uh, in many ways, the first snowbirds would come here from Chicago in the winter. Also, the bicycle racers would come here in the winter to train because you couldn't race or train back east. The Rose Parade started as a bicycle parade. What would they do? Uh, uh, decorate their bicycles with flowers? Exactly. They'd cover the bicycles with flowers. In fact, the first purpose-built Rose Parade floats were built by hooking bicycles together and decorating the whole contraption with flowers. And how long did that last as a bicycle parade, the Rose Parade? Uh, good question. I'm really not quite sure Just when they the stopped using bicycles. Oh, no, it was several years. Really? Yeah. yeah maybe 15 or 20 years. And then it grew into using full-size floats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in 1900, there were 350 bicycles in the Rose Parade. Wow. Yeah. OK, we have reached our main destination. Dennis, back in the early 1900s, this was called the Green Hotel. Yes. Today, it's called Castle Green. Yeah. But back then, at this spot, there was something extraordinary <laughs> taking place. <laughs> what exactly happened right here? Well, on January 1st, 1900, it was the grand opening of Horace Dobbins' elevated wooden bicycle tollway that was designed to go from right here in downtown Pasadena to downtown Los Angeles. Now, I've seen pictures of this thing, and it is hard to believe that somebody could think something like this up. Explain 
what his thought was and what it looked like. Well, his thought was to make money. Uh, they really did propose this thing as a money-making venture. Uh, it had major investors, including the governor of California at the time, Henry Markham. So it was definitely a money-making venture because it was the fa it would have been the fastest way to get to Los Angeles. And basically, it was an elevated wooden cycleway that was big enough for, for cycles to be coming and going. It was a two-lane cycleway. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was planned to be 20 feet wide. And how tall was it? Uh, it went from between 15 feet to 50 feet in its tallest You're areas. Kidding. Yeah. And it was going to be how long? Uh, it was nine miles from here to the plaza in downtown Los Angeles. Wow. And there were that many cyclists in Pasadena that would have taken advantage of this to make this a going business. At the time, everybody thought it was going to be a huge success. I've got a little quote here from the Pasadena Star News of uh -huh. 1900, and it says, it took a great brain to conceive it. May it be an immense success, for the scheme will be the biggest advertisement Pasadena has ever known. Wow. So there was a lot of enthusiasm for it. And that great brain, come on over here, here's our celebrity guest. Nice your name you. is? Will Dobbins. And I'm your the, uh, claim to fame? I'm the grandson of Horace Dobbins. The guy who came up with this idea and yes. in hindsight do you think he may have been on to something without a doubt without a doubt but it may have come a little bit before its time <laughs> <laughs> you know? it may have been the understatement <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because it didn't really work did it uh, no uh, Henry Huntington who was our local railroad baron did not want it to compete with his rail cars and so he would not allow Dobbins to cross over his rail tracks so the cycleway didn't really go end up going very far did he, it? he got most of the right of way together but he was stopped pretty much in South Pasadena the first place he had to cross over the railroad. Pacific Electric Railway line so your family got shut down by the railroad yeah well you know <laughs> then the car came along and shut down the railroad you're not, so. <laughs> you're not bitter your family no, not isn't bitter are you still take the train yeah but yeah. you know what you probably do have a real healthy respect for your granddad and this wonderful idea he oh, came yeah. up with yeah definitely definitely it was called the it was called the cycle Cycleway. It was called, it was built by California Cycleway Company. And it was the only one of its kind in California? Well, there were some other cycleways, but nobody proposed anything quite as bold as an elevated, uninterrupted, interurban, one city center to another bikeway. So this was unique in the world. Yes, and even to this day. Now, this is interesting. I'm standing here with Alex Trippanier in front of. Alex, these bikes caught my attention when we were going through the museum. What are these called? This is an 1880s or 90s star bicycle here, and it's a lot different than the regular high wheeler that you'd see every day out on the street. You know, you see one usually has a little wheel in the back here. This one's just the opposite. And instead of having a regular gear drive where the pedals are hooked up direct, you got a cup in here that has a whole bunch of little pieces of metal that when you press down, it catches on those pieces of metal and that's what makes you move. Now these were very popular back in the late 1800s. Everybody was riding them, but I still don't understand for the life of me how, how these could be comfortable and easy to ride. They're not really comfortable, but I mean, they're, they're okay to ride. And the other thing why they really started out is because racing, I mean, the gear ratio is, I mean, 200 to one here. I mean, you could really get going on these things. I mean, on the old racing tracks, they used to do anywhere from 15 to 35 miles an hour on these things. I mean, they just really went. All right, now we're gonna put all of this to, to action right here. I wanna see you, first off, I just wanna see you get on this thing and then you're gonna ride around. How, right. how many times did you fall off before you learned how to get on and ride this Probably thing? Probably at least a dozen. I mean, it took a while. <laughs> well, why are you riding a bike this size? What's the payoff? Well, it's just unique. You know, people drive down the road and say, hey, I haven't seen one of those things in a hundred years. I mean, <laughs> Do you, you know. Do you ride this out on the streets of Pasadena? Oh, yeah, all over. I mean, I'm really from Alhambra. I mean, I used to ride the thing and sometimes still do ride it to high school. I mean. You're kidding. Yeah, the kids get a real kick out of it, so. Wow, and how fast can you go on this thing? I, you could probably get up to 20 miles an hour or so, but I don't like to do that, I mean. I wouldn't want to fall at that speed. All right, let's see you. Let's see you. All right, here we go. There he goes. There goes Alex. Look at him. He has to kind of be moving when he starts, yeah. Dennis. Yeah. 
Yeah, isn't it neat? Uh, this is only one of the bikes that Alex rides. So he rides lots of different kinds of bikes, yeah. but look, look at the, you know, it has its own kind of distinct look to it, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the American Star is a very special bike. Wow, look at that. Let's go with him out here and watch him. There he goes. <laughs> See, and he can either pedal alternate or both at the same time because of the way the drive system is set up on that. I'll tell you what, it makes a statement. Yeah, yeah, and it goes too. Uh, one of the reasons they put... Okay, here comes his dismount. Oh, you make a dismount on the run. Yeah. The same, pretty much the same way. You could stop, but I mean, it's a lot easier. You if have you more stop, balance. you're just going to go over. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. you want to get off as it's moving. Yeah, that's a trick to it. Well, that's it. A look back at part of California's colorful bicycle history. And you know, there are many chapters in this book. We have just scraped the surface because this is an ongoing story. In today's California, there are literally millions of bicycle enthusiasts, people and their bikes who are very much a part of California's gold. Goodbye, everybody. We're getting ready to hit the road on our bikes. Ring your bell again. Good. Yep, we're on our way. California, here I come, right back where I started from. Thank you.